everyone, Dominic here, bringing you another Ninth Age Battle Report. So for this game, we've got Orc and Goblins versus the Sylvan Elves. This game we played Marching Columns with Secure Target as the secondary. A uh, quick look into magic. For myself, I've got an Adept on Shamanism, Awaken the Beast, and Swarm of Insects. And then I've got a Wizard Master on Witchcraft, Twisted Effigy, The Wheel Turns, Will o' the Wisp, and Bewitching Glare. My opponent has two adepts, on one on Druidism with Fountain of Youth and Master of Earth, and the other on Divination with Fate's Judgment and the Stars Align. Here's a look at deployment. Uh, he did win roll for sides, and then I decided deploying from left to right. Uh, so I have Goblin Rabble with Poison Spears, Goblin Reavers, Goblin Rabble with Bows, and my Wizard Master in here. Behind that, I've got Veteran Orcs with Bows and Shields and their Ed Bashers. I've got a Big Brother Giant armed to the teeth, my Orc Warlord General behind, a unit of Paired Weapon Veteran Orcs with the Wizard Adept in there, a unit of Iron Orcs, uh, Guardian Behemoth with Wicked Horns and Immensive Bulk, and then I also have two Pump Wagons, and then way over here I also had a uh, Git Launcher. For my opponent, he has a unit of Wild Huntsmen, some Archers, two Tree Fathers, uh, Heath Hunters I believe behind, uh, War Dancers with a War Dancer character, Thicket Beasts with a Thicket, thicket Beast BSB in there, uh, and then he also has the Dryads with both his Dryad Ancients in there, one of which is the General, two units of Archers, and finish off another unit of Wild Huntsmen. So I had a Vanguard and then took turn one. So my turn one movement, uh, a little bit tentative, I didn't want to get too close to terror check ranges on the Tree Fathers, and I also wanted to stay a little bit ways from the um, two units of Wild Huntsmen on the flank. The random movers, uh, I got pretty lucky with one, because if he does charge it, it is close to the table edge, so he's not going to get a ton of attacks against it. Uh, the other one, though, went kind of a little willy-nilly out there. Uh, but yeah, that's what the table looks like. Into my magic phase, I got the uh, 3d6 random move onto these Thicket Beasts. And then I also managed to get a good swarm of insects over here. And what's that, five, six out of ten uh, archers died. Uh, they do pass their panic, uh, but that's what the table is kind of looking like there. On the other flank, I also got really lucky with the uh, the Git Launcher uh, hit and did like 11 wounds to those wild riders and wiped them off the table. Uh, so in turn one for Sylvan Elves, the Thicket Beast decide to go straight forward. They roll like a 12 or a 13, uh, and then the Tree Fathers come up just as aggressively to support. The rest of his lines are kind of redressing. Uh, he moved the one Heath Hunters around here. Uh, to go deal with that git launcher that he really doesn't like. Over here he did declare that charge into the one pump wagon but failed and yeah that's pretty much it for that. In a magic he did a fate's judgment only managed to get one wound off on the giant and then at the shooting the strangle roots kill a good amount of uh, goblin reavers and he also did, I think, three wounds out of four to one of the pump wagon. Uh, so into my turn, uh, this one was a little bit complicated here. So <clears throat> the start of the turn, I pulled out the netters into this unit, uh, and I also declared the war cry. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to get these netters into this combat with all of this, uh, but after we did it, Everybody made their charge, but I couldn't fit everything because of this other tree man here. So I ended up electing these guys to fail the charge. And yeah, the, the warlord, the giant, and the, the veteran orcs go into the flank. 
Uh, the Warlord did take a Dangerous Strain and failed one, and I think I lost a couple from the Dangerous Strain as well here. The Poison Spear Goblins went into the other Tree Father, uh, and because of these guys failing, it actually kind of made the positioning a little bit better for me, I felt like. Uh, moving on this flank over here, uh, the one pump wagon that was here moved up towards these guys, blocking them in a little, and the one that was on the flank moved over here. The behemoth moves back to kind of cover the counter charge, and the iron orcs continue to slowly move forward, because I was in that, that pool of water back here. I just didn't want to take any casualties for no reason. Uh, in a magic, we get Awaken the Beast on the veteran orcs, and we also get uh, Bewitching Glare onto the Thicket Beasts. Uh, in combat over here, we did two wounds, managed to stick to the, the Tree Father, which is pretty good. Uh, he does a couple wounds to me, but uh, I think I won combat by one. He sticks around and we move on. Uh, this one over here, uh, so as you can see, the Thicket Beasts are gone, but I had to break them. I was a little surprised. He did a couple wounds to the Giant. He did a couple wounds to the Veteran Orcs, and he actually one-shot the uh, Adept that was in that unit as well, even with Scarification on. Um, and I only managed to kill, I killed the Thicket Shepherd, getting rid of the Stubborn, which is important. And I think I only managed four wounds, maybe five, to the rest of the unit with all of my attacks and, and impact hits and everything. Um, he still broke. Uh, I managed to catch him with the the Lord. I did overrun with the giant, or pursue with the giant as well, uh, but he only stumbled forward like three inches, and these guys elected to restrain and go into kind of getting ready to flee was my, my thought here. So, into Sylvan Elves, turn two. Uh, so over here, he charged the uh, Goblin Reavers with the two netters, I flee, he charges or redirects into the goblins with bows, I flee, uh, and like right here, the uh, dryads charge the veteran orcs, I flee, and I only roll like two inches. So he catches me and does a reform there. Uh, on the other side, those uh, wild huntsmen charge the one pump wagon, the wounded archers charge the second one and he manages through combat overruns kills both uh, the second overrun he doesn't make it into the iron orcs and then he moves towards a behemoth with the overrun on these guys uh, into other combats uh, and magic uh, he racked up a couple wounds with magic and shooting onto the giant uh, so i think that was i think he was at four so two more wounds there and over here I kill the tree father that the goblins were fighting and pivot to face. The next one, uh, in here, I declared a challenge against his one war dancer character. He refused. Uh, he went for the Aegis dance, the three up Aegis dance. And I only managed to kill maybe like two guys. I do win combat, uh, but he passes his break and sticks around. And then he also passes the reform to move over to get more bodies to fight against the giant if I want to bring him in. So that's what the table looks like as we go turn three for Orc and Goblins. Or here, the Behemoth goes in to the flank of the Wild Hunters, and the Iron Orcs go into the front. The Spear Goblins go into the flank of the One Tree Father, and I think that was about it for this turn. Uh, magic, I get really lucky on Magic this phase again. I got three out of three spells that I cast off. So we got Bewitching Glare on his Tree Father. We also do the wheel turns for to wound rolls of four plus always succeed on those goblins. So that should be pretty good. And I also did a Twisted Effigy on the far unit of archers that um, are fully healed. I guess it is worth noting that both of my goblin units that had fled those charges are rallied obviously, and are just behind the, the screen there. In shooting, the Git Launcher shows up again, <laughs> does a direct hit against the the Heath Hunters, and does like nine wounds, wipes them out. 
uh, into combat. I uh, issue a challenge again. He, I believe he declines again. Uh, goes for the attacks with the armor pen and lethal strike. Still doesn't manage to do any wounds on the two wound rolls though. Uh, this time he breaks from combat, but I elect to restrain my pursuit and he gets away. Uh, over here I did two wounds to him in combat and of course he he did a bunch of work to me this time so I think it was a push and he just turns to face me. The far one uh, with the behemoth, I don't think I have a picture of it, uh, the behemoth kills the heath hunters and both the units of the, the iron orcs and the behemoth just kind of pivot on the spot. So that's kind of how things are looking as we're going to go into turn three for Sylvan Elves. So the archers that were in the ruins go into the flank to help with this tree father. Um, the war dancers rally. And I think his other two units of archers are just kind of repositioning to get out of arc of sight of the behemoth that's over there. Uh, in magic, he manages to put on the last two wounds of the Master of Earth killing the giant uh, and I think he also got stars align on these guys up here uh, into combat I put on two more wounds onto the tree father uh, he does a bunch of work to me but uh, he's missing that one guy back here to, to break my, my steadfast so I stick around uh, although it was dicey I think I had to you know a seven re-rollable is not not a guaranteed thing for sure uh, turn four for Orc Goblins, we did a multi-charge against the uh, Dryads over here. So the Ed Bashers, the Iron Orcs, and the Behemoth all go in. Uh, unfortunately, the Behemoth fails. Uh, I take some dangerous trains from the woods. Uh, I did a bonehead move to here. I realized like the next day after this game that these guys have got the attached rule, so they shouldn't have moved out. Um, didn't come into play too terribly important, but they shouldn't be there. They should be somewhere else. They should be back in that unit. Uh, into magic, we did uh, Bewitching Glare again onto these guys, onto the Tree Father. We did put a wound on him, but he saved it. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. I also forgot. Uh, the general decided to go and charge the War Dancers again which put me outside of leadership range, so I failed my fear check, uh, which is why I only managed to do one wound. Uh, I guess and bad poison rolls. Um, <laughs> but, like I said, into combat, uh, the general beats down the war dancers, we pursue them off the table. Uh, over here, we don't manage that last wound, uh, but we do stick around. And then, over here, we win combat by a bunch, he breaks, I restrain with these guys to face the tree father knowing that these guys aren't going to be able to stick around again probably, and he runs four, I chase three, <laughs> so he gets away. Uh, like I said, this is turn four now for Sylvan Elves, so again, he rallies the Dryads, he keeps moving these archers out of the danger zone of the Behemoth. Uh, in combat, he wipes out the last remaining goblins and turns to face. Uh, the goblins dying did panic the one, um, the netter that I had used, going to use as chaff. So, I guess, like I said, he shouldn't have been there anyway, so it's not too bad. <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We go into turn five, Orton Goblins. Uh, so I do charge here with Ed Bashers, and I did go with that netter that's not supposed to be there into the flank. Uh, the Iron Arcs go into the last remaining Dryads, the Behemoth goes in the flank to help out, and the Lord comes back on the table. Uh, in combat, we put that last wound onto the Tree Father. The Archers panic and run away, uh, so I just pivot on the spot like so. We also wipe out the Dryads and turn around to face the center. So on uh, turn five for Sylvan Elves, he moved the one unit of archers that was wounded with four guys left 
uh, over here. He moved back that same other unit of archers, the far unit of archers, this one. Uh, they didn't rally, so they kept running. Uh, that was pretty much it, because he's got no magic. And I think in my last turn, I, without a picture of it, I think he also, I also managed to get Twisted Effigy on these guys again. Um, so they're just standing out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, my turn six, I charge the Behemoth into these guys, they flee. I charge the Iron Orcs into these guys, they hold. Uh, and I think killed another couple Iron Orcs. So I'm down to like four Iron Orcs. <laughs> um, the rest of my movement though, uh, I also charged those fleeing archers over here. I didn't need to, but I did. Um, I didn't catch them, they got out of range. So these guys stumble forward like six inches away from the, the secondary objective there. And in shooting, I managed to put those last four wounds onto the archers, getting them off the secondary objective on this side. Turn six for Sylvan Elves, all he has is those two units of archers. He does rally both of them to save their points, uh, but that was it. The game ended in a 16-4 victory for Orc and Goblins. So, uh, it was a really fun game. We had a lot of uh, interesting moments throughout the game with just strange dice rolls and, and not anywhere close to probabilities of, of things happening, um, which made it a little bit interesting, but fun nonetheless. Um, so this year is going to be the last game of our current league season for me before we go into playoffs. Uh, and so I'll play Orc and Goblins through the playoffs and then probably switch it up for, for the next league. But with the alpha Orc and Goblins, I've found that they've been overall really good. Uh, I haven't really come across any problems with them or overall big weaknesses. I find that the the list that I've been using is very well balanced and I've been able to have really good success uh, as a as a I guess indication I haven't put a battle report for all of the games but this league I've played 14 games with Orc and Goblins and I've got 14 victories with a 16 being my lowest result so um, I think it's got really good internal balance and probably things are going to change quite a bit but we'll, we'll see I suppose but that's going to do it for this game. Hope you guys enjoy these battles. Stay tuned for the next one.